So we brewed up, and then it was Muggs' lead, and Muggs went up and left the whole rope link and found himself at, at the base of an overhanging rock kind of cirque a little bit. And the top edge of it was the snow of the North Face. And it was steep. It overhung, and it was my lead. So I started up it, and I was aiding, pounding in pins and aiding, and they were going in. And then there were no more pins. There was an icicle. And so I took a we, – we always climbed in with little loops of half-inch webbing, which we would use to girth hitch the screws and tie off pins. So we call them tie-off loops. Because you, when you had – you know, if you put in a something long and it only goes in halfway, then you tie it off. So we had tie-off loops, which nobody has anymore, which is so interesting to me. But maybe eight partners do. I don't know. Anyway, so I tied, I girth hitched the icicle, and I was pushing my girth hitch up the icicle, and then pulling on it to get it to stick. And I got it up. I think I got it up to where the icicle was maybe an inch in diameter. And then I clipped a, a carabiner and my aiders into it, and weighted it, and it didn't break off. So then I climbed up the icicle, standing in aiders, until my hands are at the top of it, which is like a hump, you know, where icicle goes into the rock. And now I need a screw, so I, I'm tapping the, <laughs> I'm tapping the icicle, making a little hole to start a screw because our screws then didn't start like your screws now start. They were really hard yeah. to start. So I tap a little hole and I get it in and I get the screw and I'm screwing it in and I know that every screw I screw it in the better it's going to be because the more of it's going to be in there, but that every half turn could just break the thing off. And then I would have plumbed it down 20 feet and we'd have to start over and the icicle would be gone. So that would be a crisis. So anyway, it didn't break off. And I got in my aiders and, and started reaching up and went into a combination of aid climbing and kind of dry tooling and then rock climbing with my this wool glove thing we did. Like I had pockets in my coat that the gloves would and would go into, and I could um, get my hands in and out of them. And but anyway, with the wool gloves, we could actually freeze on and and rock climb. So I'm mostly rock climbing. And I'm also putting in pitons where I get one. And then I've gotten enough, put in enough gear where I'm running low on what I'm using, which is really small stuff. And I get in a really good one-inch angle. And I tell Muggs I'm going to come down and clean the pitch because I need the gear. So I lower off my one-inch angle and I go down, not all the way to him, but pretty far down and clean it to get the, the knife blades and horizontals and what was working. And then I got up above the, the one-inch angle with this free climbing commotion, maybe about 10 feet or something. And I was able to put in a knife blade, a pretty good knife blade. But it must have been pretty good because it's evidently still there because Steve House found it years later. So I put in this knife blade and then I start a combination of dry tooling and just rock climbing. And there's six inches of snow on the rock. So it's, it's slightly overhangs, six inches of wet snow plastered on it. So as you go up and you find a handhold and then you're, cleaning, 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 sweeping, and then you put your axe away, and then you rock climb, and then you take your axe out. So we had, we climbed with holsters. And so I had a forest ice hammer for my right hand, and I mostly carried my axe in my left hand um, because mostly the axe was the good tool, and then the hammer in the right hand, I could put the screws in. It was just my personal technique. Uh, and it's really hard climbing, and I'm getting... 30 feet out above the knife blade. So now I'm on the hardest mixed climbing I've ever done in my life by an order of magnitude. Um, the knife blade is 30 feet below me. Um, <laughs> I'm climbing really well, and I didn't sleep all night with an avalanche all night. It's like fun. Um, so I got up there, and then I remember climbing up and getting a pretty good, there's a ledge, a little handhold. I got a good right hand hold, but I couldn't get anything above it. So I actually climbed down about four feet and went around this little rib. And I'm on the other side of this little rib and I'm kind of stemming in these, because the pitch overhung, actually Steve House said it overhung a whole bunch. I know that when I pulled the rope later that it, when Muggs Jumard, he swung out 15 feet from the wall. So it overhung at least 15 feet. And so I'm now in the corner and I'm stemming out and I've gotten 
work at his handhold. I get up a little higher, and there's a little shelf up there, and I can reach it with my axe in the left hand. So I reach up, and I scrape the axe down this shelf. And I started mostly just trying to clean the snow off of it because I was looking for a handhold or something, and I can't get the snow off of it. But the, but the pick of the axe starts hooking in the same place, so it hooks, and I pull on it, and it feels pretty good. And then I try to clean off it, see what I can't see what it is. So all this time, I'm you know, holding on with my right hand stemmed in a corner, and I can get it to hook consistently in the same place. And I can wait it as much as I think I can. I, I'm still only waiting it enough so if it popped that I could maybe not fall. Finally, I decide that that's it. I'm going to commit. So I hook it. I pull down and bring my hand up, work it up, get it on top of the axe. That's what we, you know, so you're pushing the pick in. And then I mantled onto the ledge and stood up. And there was pin placements. I put in two pins. I put in a sling. I tied off the rope and said, Bugs, I'm done. He jugged up. Well, I had to pull my pack up. I had to we had a whole line because I'd done this without the pack, right? So, so I pull my pack up and he starts jumaring and he cleans the pitch. Um, he left the knife blade in. Actually, and I wondered why he left it, but then I realized that if he'd unclipped from it, he would have swung out and not been able to get back into it. So that's probably why we left it. And then he jumared up to me. And then I said, I'd been on the pitch for... What I said then was eight hours. And in fact, we didn't have a watch, so we don't know. But it had been on the pitch basically all day. Um, it was late afternoon. And Muggs um, started, I said, it's, uh, you got to, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <Yeah. Nothing. laughs> Take me to the top. <laughs> oh my and Muggs God. is the guy you want to say that to because it's like, okay. And so Muggs. Climbs up and not so hard, about 10 or 15 feet, rolls over under the snow, runs the rope out. I put the Jumars on and follow up there. You know, Jumars in 60 degree snow. And yeah. um, he goes, I don't know, maybe four pitches or something. And then there's a cornice because there's a whole, the whole thing is a cornice everywhere. So he tunnels through the cornice, which is what people on the Emperor face do. And then, um, we were on the ridge, it was dark, and we, my sleeping bag was soaking wet. I just remember lying there on the ridge um, in this wet, wet sleeping bag, really tired, and thinking um, how close I came to dying. 